Hi friends, my name is Nick. I work for ETC in New York, and I am here to tell you about all of the fabulous features that are in EOS 2.8. Let's dig in. The biggest feature in 2.8 is our ground up renovation of the fixture editor in patch. So let's go take a look at that. In my patch area, I can go ahead and hit my fixture soft key. And right away, you'll notice a much larger editor with a lot more focus and a lot more buttons to help you do what you need to do. One of the most exciting new tools in the fixture editor is the delete unused soft key. Because we store fixture profiles in the show file, oftentimes if you are going venue to venue with a base show file or you're in a rep situation, we get a lot of profiles that are no longer used and are taking up space in our show file. We indicate fixtures that are patched by having them highlighted in white. So you can see that I have lots of these profiles used, but my Solospot 2000 is no longer patched into my show file. So if I wanted to very quickly delete the ones that weren't patched, I hit my delete unused button, and it's going to give me a warning that I'm going to get rid of all the profiles that are not patched. Any channels that are using a profile are going to be safe. So I hit okay and that gets rid of that fixture. Now in the fixture editor, we've made it easier to add a new fixture. So I can hit my add a button or just hit new. And you'll see that we have a new template on the left-hand side of our screen. If we come in and start editing, we can add new parameters as we go. If we go to change a parameter, the parameter category is now searchable. Just by arrowing over, we can type in different DMX fields without having to click and open our values, change our homes, whatever we need to do. We can even open our range field directly from our keypad. If we look at our ranges window, we can open that up and add ranges as we always have. But you now have quick actions. If you click on a quick action, you'll see that we can set the number of frames or wheel slots and very quickly set up a table that's automatically generated for us. We also have quick labels, so if we just very quickly want to come in and put in color frame numbers, we don't have to go in and type all those individually. In addition to just the quick labels, you can append units very easily. So for example, if I had animation, I could append a quick label of percentage, and that would allow me to see that in my encoder display. Ranges also now introduce modes where we can create multiple tables, and depending on the status of a different parameter, we can decide which table this parameter is going to use. So dependent parameters are now easy in the fixture editor. I'm gonna click off of there. Another great thing in the fixture editor is the support for multi-cell. So it's very easy for us to add new cells and build up multi-cell fixtures based on what our parameters are. When you're done creating or editing a fixture, you can either save that fixture or cancel out of your edits. And if you want to delete an individual fixture, hitting the delete button will allow you to delete just that one, confirm your delete, and it's out of your show file. The manual has a comprehensive guide on how to create and edit fixture profiles. If you have any questions, feel free to check out that documentation. When I'm all done in my fixture editor, I just hit the patch button, and that will take me back out to patch. Another area where we've done a lot of work in 2.8 is in the Relative Effects Editor. I'm going to go ahead and double hit my Effects screen, and I'm just going to look at one of my Relative Effects. I'm going to go ahead and hit my Edit button, and when I get in here, there are a whole new bevy of tools, so let's go through a quick bit of them. First, we give you some stock patterns. So you can go through and get to some pretty basic shapes quicker than you could draw them. We also give you a lot more editing tools. So for example, if I'm in the draw area, just like previously, I can clear that off and draw, but you'll notice that I'm also getting points added to my line. What's great is I can select just a few of these, and now I have the ability to move them in and out together. If I select all of my points and I do something like form, I can stretch and change the form of that shape. With my size tool, I can just shrink it or grow it. And of course, I can always rotate it. 
But what's great is when I have just a few of these points selected, I can still use the form tools, the size tool, and the rotate tool just for the selected points. So there's a lot of editing options in here that make you a little bit more precise in what you're drawing. Some of our quick actions allow us to reselect all of the points. If we use our smoothing tool, that's going to add additional points to smooth it out. We can mirror the shape horizontally or vertically. We can use our subdivide feature in order to add additional points between selections. And again, if we have certain points selected, we can remove them. If we didn't like what we just did, we always have our undo now, and we can redo as well. If we like our changes, we can hit apply, we can restore it to the previous value before we edited, or we can clear and start all over again. So I'm gonna hit apply. These tools are slightly different depending on the relative effect you have. For example, linear gives you a preview of your extended waveforms, and in the edit area, you get very specific types of waveforms. Again, you can move these up and down. You can change the gamma. Or you can adjust individual points. Speaking of effects, I'm going to put some of my LED fixtures at full and just run an absolute effect on them. And this isn't any different than anything we've done in a while. But wait, I'm going to record those into Q37 part three, and now I can store effects and parts. We've modified one of our display tools in our playback status display. I'm just gonna go up to Q4 real quick so we can see this. The graphic that we introduced in 2.7 for follow or hang cues was a little distracting, and so we've simplified that graphic, making it a bit easier to read. But in case it still isn't your cup of tea, in your edit tools, you have the ability to display or suppress the follow hang indicator in your playback status display. We've added a little bit of extra file safety in 2.8 as well. So I'm gonna go into my browser and I'm gonna go ahead and start a new show file. And you'll notice that because of the asterisk up on my show file name, I have unsaved information. So as soon as I try and start a new show file, it's going to let me know that I have unsaved changes and I have a few options to either save this file, save it as something else, or continue without saving. For now, I'm just going to cancel. In 2.8, we have a few more tools for magic sheets. I'm going to go ahead and hide my CIA, open up my magic sheet tab, and take a look at this guy. Much like our fixture profiles, if we use a show file as a base file or in a rep situation, it's very easy to get lots of unused graphics that we've imported kind of piling up in our show file. So if we go into our magic sheet editor, into our photos area, you'll see there is a new delete unused button. So for example, if we no longer need our hang in there kitty inspirational poster, we can say delete unused. You'll get a warning that says that all of the magic sheets that are being edited in the system will be closed and then the unused images will be purged. So if you're on a multi-console environment, make sure no one else is editing. You can click OK. And you'll notice back in the editor, any unused images will be purged from the show file. Also, as a part of this work, whenever you merge in a magic sheet, we now discard any images that aren't used, keeping your show file at a manageable size. I'm going to close my editor. One of the final features for magic sheets in 2.8 is the ability to go into a full screen mode. So if I come into my config tools, you'll notice I now have limited expand mode. And if I click on that, I am now in a full screen magic sheet. My editor tab has been hidden and I can't get out of it unless I know that I need to hit shift and displays to go back to the standard EOS environment. There are a couple of options when we go into full screen mode. We can disable any keyboard input, and we can lock which page the faders are on. So if I check those, and then I go into limited expanded mode, the only way that I can start to input things on my keypad again is to shift displays. Shift displays can also take us into full screen magic sheet mode. And just to point something out while we're in here, you can see there's some dots up at the top corner of a magic sheet that's full screen. 
And that's just to indicate that the system is functioning and operating. You can think of it as the cursor on a blank command line. Shift displays can be used to take you back out. And don't forget that you can go into full screen mode on any magic sheet on any monitor. Well, that's a lot of good features, but we just barely scratched the surface on all the great things we did in EOS 2.8. So don't forget to check out the what's new part of your console. You can also check out the manual and our training videos online. And as always, the forums and the Facebook group are there to help you. I'm Nick. See you next time.